Well, I rode Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for a cast member preview. And I have opinions. This is a spoiler-free review of the new attraction. Hello everybody and welcome to a theme park chat. My name is Chris and today I'm going to be talking about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the brand new attraction that opens at Disney's Hollywood Studios the day you're seeing this video, which is March 4th. The day I'm recording this video is February 22nd because I just got off of the cast member preview earlier today. So I wanted to share my thoughts on the new attraction trying to come for a kind of constructive approach. Now, as you can see, based on my attire and everything, I am a big fan of the ride that it replaced, which was the Great Movie Ride. I worked at that attraction for four or five years and missed it every day. It was one of the defining things of why I wanted to work for Disney in the first place, and I will miss it greatly forever. I wanted to go into this new attraction with an open mind to see what the new hyped Mickey and Minnie ride has to offer. So without going into any specifics of the attraction story or anything particularly spoilerish, I'm going to give you some basic impressions of the attraction. I might mention something here and there that might be spoiler-ish, but I'm going to try to avoid all spoilers as much as possible. So. If you're watching this on opening day and do not want to see anything about the attraction before it opens, this is probably the video for you. Later on, once I can go back into studios without using a comp ticket, I plan on doing a full thrill cam ride through as well as a scene by scene detailed breakdown, kind of like what I did with Rise of the Resistance. So look for those eventually once I can go back and experience everything again. So big questions on everyone's mind. How is the new ride and how does it compare to GMR? First of all, how is the new ride? It's good. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And here's why. First of all, the attraction is boasting about using the state-of-the-art 2.5D projection technology. That's kind of the main focus, is they want to kind of surround you in this cartoon world. And for the most part, I feel they succeeded. The visuals are pretty impressive. It does use the Mickey Shorts animation style from those shorts that appeared on the Disney Channel. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of those just because I think the art style is not particularly appealing. Kind of resembles Ren and Stimpy, which I'm not a huge fan of that show. And it has some pretty ugly looking visuals, especially when it comes to certain classic characters. Mostly Goofy, who looks like he's on crack. But I will say they toned that aspect down a bit for this attraction. It still uses that art style, but it's not as like unnerving as the shorts are. In terms of the 2.5D projection, it looks good, I will say. It's pretty impressive looking. It does kind of make you feel like you are inside this cartoon world. In terms of the ride itself, it is a trackless ride. It uses vehicles that are very similar to Rise of the Resistance, if you have not experienced Rise of the Resistance. This is kind of a similar idea. The main difference is how they are utilized. Rise of the Resistance uses individual vehicles which you are loaded in to a, sp a specific loading area. This attraction loads a whole train of vehicles, four different trackless vehicles in a train. So you can get into one of four different vehicles that are all linked together, not really linked together, but kind of look like they are, with a locomotive in front. Now again, I'm not going to go into spoiler details on what happens during the attraction, but it's a pretty cool concept for a trackless ride. Honestly, I've never seen a trackless ride load like that. Most are load the same way that Rise of the Resistance or SeaWorld's Antarctica do, where you have separated load areas and then they dispatch the vehicles into the attraction at will. This one's a little bit different. It loads more like GMR used to, which is kind of cool. So, 
basic concept, which is not spoilery because this is kind of revealed by Disney, is you are watching a brand new Mickey short which debuts inside the Chinese theater. When something goes wrong and you are brought into the cartoon world, this aspect is done very well. <laughs> I was impressed with how well it was done and the cast members who were part of the pre-show experience did a really good job of selling it. So I liked the pre-show a lot. Honestly, it was one of my favorite things about the attraction was the pre-show element and how you were transported into this cartoon world. It was a neat effect and it was done effectively. So good for Disney on making another cool transition from one type of world into another. I appreciated that a lot. So why am I not sold on this attraction quite like I am about an attraction like Rise of the Resistance? The main things are the story has issues. Now I understand that the Mickey shorts are not exactly masterpieces of storytelling, but this attraction kind of goes all over the place in a very, very short period of time. It takes you through all kinds of different scenes that don't tie together particularly well. Now there are some great moments in these scenes, but most of the time I just felt like, oh, we're in this, this is going on. Okay, and then the next part, oh, this is going on. All right. So it, it's kind of an incoherent story that doesn't tie together super well, and it's done so quickly that you kind of get whiplash trying to figure out, okay, what just happened? <laughs> Which, I mean, again, I get it. it. It's supposed to go for kind of that cartoony feel, and I understand that, but Disney being such a storytelling focused company I feel should have told a better story. When you look at Rise of the Resistance and I know it's, it's not really a fair comparison to compare this new ride to Rise of the Resistance because they're yeah, they're similar but they're not at the same time. Rise of the Resistance is easily the best Disney storytelling has been. You are completely immersed in that world. This attraction starts off well with the pre-show elements, but then once the ride gets going, it, you don't really get that immersion and get that storytelling. The story for Rise of the Resistance is pretty straightforward and easy to follow. You're on a prisoner transport. The Resistance breaks you out. You are going through all these mishaps to try to escape the First Order. It makes sense, and each scene progresses accordingly. This attraction, it's all over the place. So. I think the story is one of the biggest problems of Runaway Railway. I don't think it's a deal breaker, honestly, and especially for kids. Kids are going to love this attraction because it's Mickey and Minnie and there's all kinds of stuff that happens. So from an adult perspective, I think the story has some issues. I also think the pacing is a little too abrupt, but kids are going to love it. And I think that's the main ingredient here and that's the main focus. Our, this is a ride that's supposed to appeal to kids, especially younger kids, and families. So taking that into account, I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> the other complaint I have is the animatronics. Now there are not many animatronics in this attraction, I think there's only like two or three. What's weird about them is they use the same animation style from the Mickey Shorts but they're the face-projected animatronics like in Seven Dwarfs Mind Train or Frozen Ever After. And I can definitely say when you are sitting in certain vehicles, because the perspective isn't always the same depending on what vehicle you are in, it can look kind of unnerving, or a popular term is nightmare-inducing when you see how these characters look with like the projected faces on like a really weird misshapen kind of face. It's not great looking, to be honest. Especially again, comparing it to Rise of the Resistance, which has all top of the line animatronics, this one barely has any and they're kind of creepy looking. <laughs> not a fan of that. They also made a big deal when they first announced the attraction that there's this new song that's going to, you know, be the next big parks jingle. I wasn't impressed by it. I thought it was kind of, eh. 
it wasn't really super earwormy like many other classic Disney attraction songs like Zippity Goo Dah or Grim Grinning Ghosts. Any song from Country Bear Jamboree, those are all classics and they get in your head after you've done those attractions. The Mickey and Minnie song, which again, I'm not gonna talk about it because this is a spoiler free review. It's okay. I didn't love it, but maybe if I go on the attraction more, it might appeal more. But from the first time I've done it, it didn't impress me. So overall, I think it's a good family ride. I think it's going to appeal to families. It's going to appeal to kids. Is it going to appeal to adults, especially those who are big fans of Great Movie Ride or of Hollywood Studios history? Maybe not so much, but I don't think that's the goal. And a lot of times I think us as theme park enthusiasts kind of forget the fact that parks do need attractions that may not appeal to you. I still like the ride. I think it's a good ride. I don't think it's a great ride, and I certainly don't think it's better than Rise of Resistance, which some people apparently do think, which, I mean, that's their opinion. It's a decent ride, not amazing. Definitely want to ride it again, and maybe after absorbing it a bit more, and maybe after seeing it from different perspectives, I might appreciate it more. So. We'll see, I definitely want to ride it again, so hopefully after we're no longer blocked from Hollywood Studios, I can ride it again, film it from a few different angles and appreciate it more for what it is. Now, of course, the last question, and again, this is kind of me being biased, but I'm going to answer it. How does it compare to Great Movie Ride? It's very different. <laughs> Great Movie Ride was an icon. It was the reason why Disney's Hollywood Studios, originally Disney's MGM Studios, existed. It was a ride all about classic, iconic movies. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is about the mouse that started it all. And honestly, a point was brought up at D23 right after they made the announcement that Mickey has never had a ride through attraction. And the only attraction that shares Mickey's name isn't about him. It's of course, Bill Har Magic, which is more about Donald. And I agree, Mickey should have an attraction. I think this is a good thing. I don't think if you're going into it expecting something along the same kind of lines as GMR, it's not that. Not at all. It's a lot shorter. Uh, GMR had like a 17 minute runtime. Like it was a pretty, or 12, something like that, I forgot, it's been many years. It was a long attraction. I think it was 17 to 18 minutes. Uh, Mickey and Minnie has a four and a half minute runtime. <laughs> it's a very short attraction, especially considering how much happens during that attraction. You're going through these show scenes at a breakneck pace. And I think that's kind of a shame because there are a lot more scenes that I would like to absorb and get more from. And I think I might appreciate them more if we spent more time in those show scenes. But as it is, it's a big attraction. I'm sure the goal is for this to be a people leader to just really continuously get people through it. And I think it's going to succeed. It doesn't compare to Jim. It's not going to. And I say as a hardcore GMR fan, as someone who worked that attraction for many years, if you're one of those people who doesn't want to ride this attraction because it's not GMR, because it replaced GMR, don't do that. Give it a chance. To tell an old story, when I was a kid, my favorite ride of all time was Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And when they announced it was closing in 1998, I was devastated. And I boycotted the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh until I was in high school. That's how much I hated that attraction. When I wrote it in high school, I realized this is a good attraction. Is it better than Mr. Toad? No. But it's good for what it is. And I can see why it appeals to the demographic that it's meant to appeal to. It's meant to be a kid's ride, and it certainly appeals to the kids who enjoy a Winnie the Pooh. 
This attraction is the same way. Hollywood Studios was in desperate need of a family-friendly attraction that anybody can ride. This not only fills that need, but does it using state-of-the-art technology, is pretty impressive visually, and has some genuinely good moments in it. It's not GMR. It's never going to be GMR. It's not trying to be GMR. It is something new. There are homages to it inside Mickey and Minnie's Friendly Railway. The main things are the lobby queue is pretty much the same. There are a few modifications that were made to it, but if you appreciated the interior of the Chinese theater, that's pretty much intact. They also continue that into the new portions of the, the queue area and the facade. So the, the Chinese theater aesthetic is completely through the attraction. So if, if you like that, you're definitely going to appreciate the fact that that theme is continued. And I didn't notice any the first time I wrote it, but I also, it was the first time I wrote it, so I wasn't paying as close attention. But I've been told, I don't know what, there are supposedly multiple references to Great Movie Ride within the attraction, so I'm hoping to get a list of them or try to figure out what they are and then eventually I want to do a video where I just point out all the different references to Great Movie Ride within Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway so hopefully I'll be able to do that after the attraction opens. So those are my spoiler free thoughts coming from a former GMR movie writer fan of the old attraction as well as someone who's trying to go in with an open mind. So, I would say go in with an open mind. If you like the Mickey shorts, you're going to love this. If you have kids, they're going to love this. I think it's a good ride. I really do. It's not GMR. It's not a top tier attraction. It is a solid ride. The people going to Hollywood Studios are definitely going to enjoy it. So there are my thoughts. I might go into more detail after I can actually do my breakdown where I go scene by scene and talk about different things that I noticed within the ride. So look for that at a later date. In the meantime, that is going to do it for this episode of Theme Park Chat. Hope you enjoyed it. Look for plenty more videos throughout the year. We're kind of on a roll releasing a whole bunch of videos this year, so we're going to hope to continue that trend and cover more new attractions because there's a lot of new attractions over there this year, both here and in California. So hopefully I can cover all and most of them as they open. I'm pretty close to it. So. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Theme Park Chat. Bye.